Hey, good morning, and welcome to the Few Godly Men, Volume 3, with your man, Pastor Reverend Artel Belman Sr., brought to you today by Spirit of Excellence Ministries, and we're continuing on our series, Volume 3, on the Few Godly Men, and just kind of continuing this flow of seeing how God dealt with mankind and how he interacted with them and why God even blesses us male and female. And we're focusing today on God's interaction with Abram as we continue to see how he has moved throughout the book of Genesis, you know, establishing men, establishing uh, men who would walk and who were righteous in their generation, men that God has interacted with, men who God has blessed and men who God has dealt with from a consequence perspective that we may learn, Father God, how to be the men that God intended us to be. So we are now in Genesis, the 17th chapter, and we're going to pick it up in verse 1. We're going to read through some of these verses and really understand what God is trying us to get us to understand. So let's go for it. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and I will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations, Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, that thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. Hallelujah. Now, let's take a couple of bullet points out of this. There's a lot of stuff in here that for our purposes, we're going to focus in on for. One thing that you must know as a man of God or a man walking with God. Age does not stop God's plan for those who walk with God. You know, God came to Abram and he was 99 years old to reestablish a promise that he made 20 something years earlier. You know, sometimes we look at our situation, we look at our age, we look at our maturity and we say, okay, those days, our best days are behind us. But keep in mind that when God gives you a promise, he is able to fulfill it. So age does not prevent you from walking in what God says. I'm almost, I'm hit closer to 60 than I am to 20. And I'm realizing now that God can walk you through health situations, financial situations, and now even age situations to still put you on the path that he has promised you from the beginning. So don't allow age to stop you from doing what God has called you to do. Second thing is God promise is always between God and man. When you listen to the tone of this, God is saying, I am the almighty God. I am the one who's going to do this. And then in the fourth verse, he says, and I am going to, I have made you a father of many nations. So God considers things which he established as already done. He is the author and the finisher. If he said it, will he not perform it? God is speaking as if it has already happened because in God's mind, there is nothing that time can do to stop this plan. Hallelujah. Third thing is that when Abram, Ham, when Abram hears the plan of God, he falls down to the ground and he honors God. Men, we have to, once we get God's plan for our life and his purpose and we're walking in his way, we have to stay humble. Abraham then humbles himself before God. Even though later we're gonna see where he kind of has doubts about things, but he occasionally always says, basically, God, your will not mine. He humbles himself to that which God has said. And when he does that, listen to this. And God then says unto him, I'm going to change your name. And you will no longer be known as Abram. You will be known as Abraham, for you will be a father of many nations. And we know that. But I, I also believe this. God changed his name 
because God wanted him to walk in a newness of life because now he was he was um, forgiven for some of his errors and mistakes in the past. And now God was saying, I don't want these mistakes to go with you. I want you to stay in me. You know, God restored him by giving him a new name. Just as when Jesus comes foreshadowing that his blood makes us new, old things are passed away. Behold, new, all things are new. My name has been Artel for almost 60 years. But Artel changed his name in the kingdom once he turned himself over to Jesus. His, his habits changed, his speech changed, his life changed experiences didn't change but how he experienced life change and when god changes your name from a non-believer to a believer from one who's walking in darkness to one who's walking in light your areas in life and your gratitude for life and your joy in life change with that name change hallelujah now in verse 7 we'll see this and i will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generation for an everlasting covenant to be unto thee. And they shall see and thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherefore thou art a stranger and the land of Canaan. And for an everlasting possession. And I will be their God. And God said to Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant before thee, and thy seed after thee, generation after generation. And then he gives them the premise of circumcision. Right? Now, let's look at this. And the first takeaway in this, these um, verses is the Lord establishes, and not the first, but one of the things we want to take out of this, is the Lord establishes circumcision to, ID, to identify those who are in covenant with Abraham and Abraham's seed. So God says, listen, I'm going to give you this new name, but there has to be a shedding of blood and there has to be a way to identify those who are mine or your seed and those who are not my seed. So circumcision was really a Old Testament covenant where God establishes a people who will serve him. Now notice that we'll look at we'll get to we'll skip and get to that when we get to the next verse so this is a foreshadowing of the need of blood for a token or a payment for sin and how do we see this later in the fulfillment of it we see the fulfillment of jesus who had to shed his blood to cover our sins and to restore us back to god that whomsoever shall believe it in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. So the word tells us, or Jesus tells us, that he did not come to destroy the Old Testament or the law, but he came to fulfill it. So the fulfillment of circumcision took place on the cross when the, blessed, when the blood of Jesus washed away and paid for my sins and paid for your sins. Hallelujah. Let's praise God just for that for a moment. And then when we get to the 15th verse, you'll see this. And God said to Abraham, as far as Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt call her name Sarah. But Sarah shall her name be, and I will bless her and give her a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him in, in his hundred years old? And shall Sarah, that is ninety years old, bear? And Abram said unto God, Oh, uh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him hey god didn't just rename abram abraham based on his mistakes he also renamed sarai sarai to sarah because she was going to be a mother of many nations but sarah also had some issues sarah allowed abraham to lie about her to the pharaoh and go into the pharaoh's house sarah because of her jealousy 
and lack of confidence in God gave Abraham the opportunity to lay with her handmaiden so he could have a son. And then once Abraham did these things, Sarah was so angry with Hagar that she treated her harshly, uh, was jealous of her, and made her feel so bad for actually following her directive that, that Hagar ran away and God brought her back to the fold. So Sarah name needs to be changed because if she was going to walk in the newness of life as Abram was going to walk in the newness of life, she had to be restored as well. Then God prophesied to Abraham about, hey, she will give you your own, your own son out of her loins. God prophesied and said she would do it in her old age. Again, age is not an issue. It's only a number. And then it, with God, it's only a number. And Abraham fell for her for, uh, before God like he did before, but he laughed and doubted God. And God prophesied unto him again and restated that when God says something is going to happen, it is going to happen because the word that he uses here in the King James is he has an everlasting covenant. So when God says it, it shall come to pass. When God deem it, it shall come to pass. Hey man, male, father, husband, son, whatever role you are in as a male in your family, no, God has a covenant that he has with you. But those that love God, God is everlasting. He is not a man that he should lie. I don't care if it's a financial blessing. I don't care if it's a spiritual blessing. I don't care if it's a mental blessing. Whatever God has said, he shall do it. And don't let time or age um, prevent you from flowing and what God would have for you to do. I don't care if you're nine. I don't care if you're 99. If God has put it on your heart, and you can do it as God has said with, you know, as you're young, you got to do it under the uh, umbrella of your parents. But if God puts something on your heart, maybe now is not the time. Maybe over the period of time, it will manifest it. Manifest. Think about Joseph. Joseph had a dream at a young age that his brothers were going to bow to him. And he went through all of these trick, all of these issues before God manifested it. But it was manifested in the timing of God. Hey, Grandma Mills used to say, man has plans and God laughs at them all because it was man who laughed at God's plan. And later we're going to see where Sarah later laughed at God's plans. But when God says it, it shall come to pass. Have confidence that your God is with your God. All things are possible and in him nothing is impossible for your life, for your family, for your marriage, for your career, for your job, for your business, for your education. Nothing is impossible to them that believe. Hey, may God bless you. Hey, may God prosper you. Hey, may the favor of God be on you. And hey, may God keep you until next time.